Hey guys, my name is Rachel and this is my August wrap up. This is the first time I've ever actually been able to have an official wrap up for a month because it's the first time that I feel like I have read enough books to actually talk about them. I read a whopping total of 11 books in August. And since last year, I think I barely read five books. I think that's something I'm going to celebrate. Six of those books were eBooks, three of them were audiobooks, and two of them were physical books. I also bought a few books this month and I haven't bought any books in forever. So I'm really excited to show you guys. So check it out. We have the entire Mistborn Era 1 trilogy, Mistborn, The Well of Ascension, and The Hero of Ages, which I wanted to find a Mistborn that was actually called The Final Empire instead of Mistborn because I know that's the original title. But we do what we can. Um, I'm currently about 200 pages into Mistborn and I am vlogging my experience. So whenever I get that book finished, I will have a video up for you guys on that. I also purchased Jurassic Park at Half Price Books and I got a super beat up paperback edition because I don't know, I like beat up looking books. I also purchased A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, a George R. R. Martin book, and I'm really excited to get into this one eventually. It is set in the same world as Game of Thrones, but it has um, a little bit of a lighter story. There's illustrations with it. I wouldn't say lighter story. It's probably not very light at all, but it's a shorter story and I'm excited to, you know, dive into it. It's a bit more history behind Game of Thrones, which I have now read all five books of the original series. So I'm really excited to start catching up on some of his other um, expanded world books. And then the last book that I bought this month, um, I guess my husband that technically bought it, but I wanted to show you. This is Halo, The Fall of Reach. And we're trying to get my husband into reading a bit more and he got really excited. He was really cute. He spent, that's my dog in the background. He was really cute. He spent like probably longer than I did in the stacks at Barnes and Noble trying to find a book that he wanted to take home. It was awesome. Now for the books I actually read this month. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail for the books that I've read that I've got videos planned for, but for the ones that I'm not gonna do any videos on, I am more than happy to share all of the information. The first book that I finished this month was an audiobook that my husband and I started together. And the reason we chose this book was because we heard it was kind of creepy spooky and it was not at all. But that book is Room 119 by T.F. Flintz. And I heard about this book on booktube from Connor at Connor's Library Corner and his friend Brooke. I don't know her channel name, but the two of them both read this book and they really enjoyed it. And they said it had some spooky vibes and my husband's really into horror, but I am not at all. So I was like, let's try this book out and see how it goes. Um, Scotty enjoyed it. I did not. It wasn't what I expected it to be. And I really felt like the story wasn't as good as it could have been. Um, doing some background on the author, I found out that this book was, he wrote it and he's not really a reader. Like he doesn't read books and he just had a couple of weird dreams one night, I guess not one night, but in succession. And he decided to write a book on these dreams. And you can really tell <laughs> because the plot was kind of convoluted and halfway through the book, you really get the resolution of the story, but then it just continues to go on for another, I don't know, the rest of the book continues to go on and it's not really um, going anywhere. But what this book is about, um, there is a man who is a stock market trader who has made his work his whole life and he's kind of abandoned his family. Um, but he ends up making a huge mistake at his job and this causes him to go on a downward spiral where he um, was about to attempt suicide. Hello, Lily. Hello, Lily. Oh, hello. Hello. This causes him to go on a bit of a downward spiral where he is contemplating suicide. And one day he finds himself on the edge of a cliff and they he is stopped from committing the act by an elderly couple that is seated behind him on a bench looking out over the cliff. And they give him a card that says, I, this, this is generic, but basically directing him to go to room 119 at this hotel. Basically when he gets to this hotel, he learns lessons about himself and his family and what he wants to value in life. And it goes from there. I won't give any spoilers in case anyone wants to read it, but the story was not that great. So it's fine if you don't read it. The next book I finished in the month of August was Nightbringer by James Byron Huggins. This is actually a spooky spooky story that I really enjoyed. Essentially, there is a group of tourists that get snowed in at a monastery that has just been reopened to the public for tours and there's a monster trapped in the monastery with them. 
And this gets into a bit of Christian mythology as a background, but essentially we have a half demon, half man monster whose sole purpose, sole drive in life is to bring fear and kill people. Oh, I guess I'm supposed to give star ratings for these books. So uh, Room 119, I would give two stars. I'm not mad that I read it, but it wasn't anything exciting and I wouldn't really recommend it to anyone. Nightbringer, I would give three stars. It wasn't anything spectacular. I enjoyed it quite a bit. If you enjoy this type of writing and these types of stories, you'll enjoy it just fine. Again, not anything super crazy. There were a couple of twists in there that I wasn't expecting and that had some fun reading it. The next book that I finished for the month was Eight Dance with Dragons. This is book five in George R.R. R. Martin's Game of Thrones series and this is a chonker but I actually didn't read it. As you can see my paperback is still in pristine condition. I listened to it on audiobook and this was the first audiobook I read that I really enjoyed myself reading and I was glad I read it as an audiobook and not physical. The narrator for this audiobook was not great um he he didn't know how to do voices for women like his his men voices were fine but for women it was all the same it was like either like a really squeaky like grandma kind of voice or it was like a really deep I, I guess his version of a sexy voice but the, it was not good it's hard to give a rating for this because I know the story as a whole so I don't know how to give one section of that story a rating I will say there was plenty in here that was not in the tv show and I loved getting that extra background specifically when it comes to Bran and his time north of the wall with the three-eyed crow in this version it's the three-eyed crow um but something I learned through reading this book after seeing like the finale of the TV show was that Martin's characters are all unlikable. The TV show gives them each like uh, some humanity and a little bit of lovableness, but his characters in the books, I hate them all. I, there's not a single character in here that I'm rooting for, that I want success for. I don't like any of them, but yet I'm still reading the story and I'm enjoying the story and I'm enjoying the world, so... I don't know how to go. I don't know how to feel about that, but that's where we're at. The next book I read, and it's actually six books, I'm just going to combine them all together, was the Selection series. And I'm not going to go into detail on this because I have a whole video plan that I'm going to record after this one. Um, kind of doing a review, but also doing a little bit of a twist on the review. So if you're interested in that, Marshall. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it when it comes out. The next book I finished was Ready Player One. This was also an audiobook and I read this book because my husband read the book after he loved the movie and he wanted to talk to me about the differences between the book and the movie and I am willing to do anything to get him reading more and talking more about books together. So I read it and I listened to an audiobook. It took me about three days to finish. Um, for those of you who don't know, Ready Player One is a science fiction story around a world that virtual reality gaming has kind of overcome the society itself, and all of society actually happens within the virtual reality world. I think I enjoyed it better than the movie, because the movie did what it does, and it Hollywoodized, and it added in its normal formulas to change the story to fit what they see as most profitable, and so there was a lot that was changed. The book itself has a lot more nostalgia for the 80s and for um, early gaming, and for old school Pac-Man, and just a thousand games I'd never even heard of before, but it really was Ernest Cline's love letter to the 80s and to gaming, and I enjoyed it for what it was. There was some problems with it, the main one being this gamer girl fantasy. There's, there's YouTube videos on it, and I've watched them all, of this discussion on gamer guys specifically having an idealized fantasy of what a girl who plays video games would look like, and she's not realistic, and she's unattainable, and hypersexualized and it was all throughout this book and it drove me crazy. Overall though the book was fine. I'd give it three stars. Not really anything special. I enjoyed my time reading it but um, it's it's not anything to write home about. If you like science fiction and you like gaming stories in general you'll like it which is why my husband liked it. The last book that I read in August was 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and I just finished this one a few days ago. For those of you who don't know, 20,000 Leagues is a classic written by Jules Verne, and it is considered one of the first science fiction stories as 
by some. It's hard to pinpoint what exactly was the first of anything. This story follows a man who is a scientist and he has a couple of friends and they go on an adventure to basically hunt what people consider is a whale, but then they find out that it's not actually a whale, it's a super secret submarine that's got this entire crew of people that's been living in it, and no one knows about it, but they just live on the bottom of the ocean. I picked up this classic because I had an idea of what I thought the story was gonna be about, and I expected a little bit more fantasy elements. I thought they were gonna find more sea creatures on the bottom of the sea. Um, I wouldn't really recommend this book unless you just love classics and you have a desire to read all of the classics. I can see after reading it the influence that this book has had on science fiction, on stories of ocean exploration, but that doesn't mean it was any more enjoyable to read. It was quite dry. It was a lot of listing of underwater species of plants and animals and different types of fish and different locations in the ocean. They really truly do go all over the world. And that was cool to see what a journey to the South Pole would be like, what a journey to a, to basically Atlantis would be like, all kinds of fantastic stuff. There was highlights where some things would happen and those were enjoyable, but there was no real plot. The story was just, it was just atmospheric. It was just a day in the life of a man in a submarine on the bottom of the ocean. And it was quite boring. It took me, it took me a really long time to get through. The reason I kept pursuing it and did not DNF this book was because Captain Nemo, the captain of this submarine, had an air of mystery about him and there were questions about him as a person that we wanted to get answered. And I'm so mad because we didn't get those answers at the end of the book. I have considered doing a review specifically for this book, as well as comparing it to the Series of Unfortunate Events book, The Grim Grotto, because I am aware that there are a lot of similarities and a lot of connections between the two books as most Lemony Snicket books have connections to other literary works. Um, not necessarily sure if it's something I'm going to prioritize, but if that's something you're interested in, leave a comment down below and maybe I'll make that video just for you. This has been my August wrap up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'm excited that I actually read enough books in the month of August to do a wrap up for. I wanna know what you guys read in August. If you have a booktube channel and you filmed a wrap up, link it down below so I can go watch it. I'm really proud of myself for reading 11 books in August. I know six of them were the selection series and they were really easy to get through, but that's still way more than I read in the last year. Don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in any of the content I mentioned that's coming up, the selection series review, the Mistborn vlog, anything. Leave a comment if you've got something to say. I'll respond and thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you later.